Hi, if you're an iOS developer, in this video you will learn how to assign and develop live activities for iOS 18 using ActivityKit. As an example, I will show how I design a live activity that shows the information for a football match. I will start by explaining the different required design states, then how to map the domain problem data with those design states. From that, I will show how to model the data and set up the live activity in a widget model and finally manage its life cycle both with code and via push notifications. My name is Felipe and I am a iOS and macOS developer based in Norway with more than seven years of experience developing for Apple platforms after an additional six years working in the backend. You can follow me on Mastodon or subscribe to my channel for more iOS and macOS content. To start, we need some basic context. Lab activities were originally introduced on iOS 16 and have gotten updates on both phone 17 and 18 as well. The intention is to replace a series of push notifications informing about like a given live event, and they keep track of live events up to eight hours. Some interesting use cases for live activities could be uh, food delivery events, uh, a plane ride, keeping track of match scores, bus tickets, renting a scooter, etc. Live activities can be started in code when you're app is in the foreground. Uh, from iOS 17.2, they can also be started by push notifications directly to a device or via push notification channel from iOS 18. For pushes, you will need a server to send the pushes uh, for APNS. We'll go back to this topic later. Let's start with design. When you want to create a live activity for your app, you need to design the four required design states for it. The lock screen state, used when your phone is locked. It will appear with a custom view in the lock screen. It will also be used in the home screen for devices that don't have the dynamic island. Then the dynamic island expanded state is used when your live activity is running and you press on the dynamic island. Then you will see the expanded version of the activity. In terms of design, this state requires to define the five regions of the expanded state. But we will come back to this when implementing the live activity. Then there is the dynamic island compact uh, state. If your lab activity is the only one running at the moment in the home screen, then the lab activity will use this state, showing bits of information to both sides of the dynamic island. Then the dynamic island state minimal is when, if there are more than one lab activity running at the same time, your lab activity will be displayed in the minimal state. This state can be presented as attached, as part of the camera cutout, or detached, as its own small area next to the dynamic island. It's important to notice that all of these four states are required when designing and developing a live activity. So it's good to have an idea on how you would solve your problem for all these cases. There's a fifth design case we can consider. Watchers. By default, when running a live activity, your Apple Watch will show it on the smart stack on the watch with an adapted version of your compact presentation. You can create a custom design for Apple Watch, but this is optional. For my sample project, I will be building a live activity on a sports app to keep track of the score of a football match. In a simplified football match, you can get the following states when it comes to li the live activity. Uh, before the match, uh, so you're alerting when the match will start. Then when the match actually starts, it would transition to a match playing state. Then when the first half of the match finishes, the match goes into a pause state. Then, when the second half starts, the match goes into the match playing state again. And when the time runs out, we'll end up with a match ended state. For simplicity, I discarded the time extensions, extra periods, and penalties. These are the domain model states and the basic logic of my lab activity. One important part is to define how those states will be presented as a live activity. Even more, we need to know how I will render the domain states in all those required live activity design presentations. With this combination of domain states and design presentations clear, I can start modeling the data that I need to create this live activity. When the match is playing, the data that my live activity needs starts with the blue team name and image, the red team name and image, the blue team score, and the red team score. Then I need information about the current match state. When the match is playing, I will need the name of the period, the time when the period started, and how much time of left of that period. I will need also the match start time, and to know if the match has started, 
post or it has a loop. That's all the information that I need for this live activity. And I made sure of it by designing the activity in all the relevant state combinations. Now with this data for live activities, it's important to distinguish between attributes and content state. Attributes are the data that is constant across the full duration of the live activity. And the content state is the data that changes over time within the duration of the activity. The distinction is important as we have a limit of four kilobytes of data for the content state values. With this separation, we can define the required data structures for creating live activities. A structure that conforms to activity attributes, in this case, the team's information plus much start time. Also a structure called content state, nested in the activities attributes type as a protocol requirement of an associate type. Here we will set the properties like the score and the match state. I will have these types defined in an SPM package in my project as I will be including the types both for my iOS target and a widget target. With that in place, it's time to define the lab activity. You will that by creating a widget type whose body is activity configuration. In here, we pass the score activity attributes, effectively declaring that this lab activity in particular works with that type of data. The two required closures are used to define the UI for the lock screen and the dynamic island configurations. Those closures will receive an activity context type where you can access the attributes and the content state. In the case of the lock screen closure, we need to build a Swift UI view. Since we're in a widget context, the Swift UI view needs to be compatible with widget kit. This means we won't be able to use views like async image, for example. For the dynamic island, we use the dynamic island definition where we define the different presentations relevant to it. The interesting one is the expanded presentation. Instead of returning a single view, we create it by defining regions of the expanded presentation. Leading, trailing, center, and bottom. Since I designed the score activity and consider all the different combinations, that can be a great indication on how I will create the pieces of UI that we'll need for the live activity definition. I won't go into much detail in here about that UI, since it's quite simple. My full working sample code repo is linked in the description down below. One aspect that I will mention though is that for certain views, uh, I will use the activity family environment to adapt my UI for the custom watchOS presentation. For my example, I create a simple demo app. The only thing that this app does is to allow the user to start and update the lab activity manually for the varying purposes. When we press the start button, it will execute the start activity function where I create the attributes and the content values for the activity and call try activity .request. An important aspect to know is that to start that live activity, the app needs to be in the foreground. Once I start live activity, I keep a reference to it and then create the new content value and call the update method on it. With the same live activity reference from before, ending the live activity can be achieved by the M method on the activity itself. As a parameter for this method, we can specify how long we want to keep the activity UI after the activity ended. Since iOS 17.2, we can start live activities via push notifications. I will start by giving an overview of this process and then I will show all concrete steps. To be able to start an activity via push notification, the first thing we will need after the activity is set up in the project is a start token. When we launch the app, we can start listening for the activity's start token. Then we need to inform our backend server about this token, which will be used to send a push notification via APNS to determine which device and which live activity to start. This token value will change every time the app is launched. So we need to make sure that our backend value is up to date. We obtain this token by reading from the async sequence, activity push to start token updates. Once a live activity is started, we should listen for the activity updates and the nested async sequence push token updates. We need to send this token to the backend too. This token is used for the rest of the lab activity to send updates and end the lab activity via push notification. The reason this token is different is that we can run multiple instances of the same lab activity. Let's say if we observe two football matches playing at the same time, then we need a way to identify each lab activity instance to know which one to update. As I mentioned, the first step is to get the start token. If I launch the demo app, it will get printed into the console. In the app delegate, I will start a task to observe that push to start token async sequence. Once I copy the start token, I can go to the Xcode project file, 
and then in the signing and capability section, I can see the push console button. When I press that button, it opens the Cloud Kit console. After logging in, I make sure that I'm on the right team and then I try to find the right bundle ID for my application. In this case, the lab activity demo. On the Send tab, I can create notifications that I can send directly to a device. I will give the notification a name. Start live activity. I make sure I'm on the development environment for the push, as the app running in the simulator is. I need to select the live activity as a push type, and finally, I need the JSON content for the push. I made a command line utility that helps me create this JSON content for my demo using the data structures I defined for the live activity. The structure of the JSON content to start an activity goes like this. We need the event property set to start, a timestamp in seconds since 1970 format, an attribute style property with the value of your activity attributes implementation. In my case, this will be the score activity attributes as a value. Then the attributes key will need a value of a JSON representation of that score activity attributes. So in this case, I'm passing the team's info plus the match start time. We will also need a content state property with a value of the initial value of the score activity content state. In this case, the match state is not yet started. Finally, another object can be sent to inform the user of the activity started. I can copy that JSON and paste it in the console. Then I can either check the generate curl command to send this push from the terminal, or I can simply send it. The console informs me that the push was sent successfully, and as we see on the right, the push was received and the lab activity was started. I made a Swift script that allows me to generate JSON data for the different events I want to show in my demo. One advantage of writing this script in Swift is that I can import the score activity attributes and its content state to create JSON directly from serializing values, which will ensure I don't have any decoding errors when the app receives that JSON from the score attributes. It's also possible to use the terminal to send the push notifications to APNS, but for that, you need to configure certain environment variables for authentication. Apple has great documentation for this, and I have linked it in the description down below. Now, going back to the Xcode console, we can see that there is like an update token available. We use this token to update this instance of the lab activity via push notification, so I will copy that value. I will create a new push notification now to update the live activity, indicating that the match has started. After assigning the name and pasting the update token, I make sure the push type is still live activity. Then I generate and copy the JSON for this update. Now, for updating the activity, the JSON content is a slightly different. Now the event value is update. We don't need the attributes and attributes type properties, but we do need the content state value. I can see it generate a core command or send the push directly. The push was received and the activity updated and changed the background color as I defined in my design. To send a new update push to my lab activity, instead of creating one from scratch, I can use the clone button and update the fields for the push. In this case, I need a new JSON to inform the user that there was a goal in the match. Generate and copy the JSON, and I can send the push. Then we can see the lab activity is updated. With the same steps, I can create a push that will set the match state to halftime. I can also create a new push that will update the match, informing that there was a second goal. The match became interesting, but at the last five minutes of it, a new goal happened. Then I can make the push to inform the users about it. Finally, the match ended. For that, I can create a new push, still using the update token from before, and have a special JSON that signals the end of the lab activity together with its last state and instructions on how long before the activity is removed by iOS.
Also, for demonstration purposes, I can show that even though there is a running live activity, I can send a push with the start token again to launch a new instance of the live activity. In my experience, debugging live activities is not as easy as you cannot set a breakpoint when the system starts or updates a live activity. It's an underlying system process. In my road of learning about live activities, the problems I encountered the most were 1. The going problems for content state or attributes. I just will let you know that there was a decoding problem, but it won't say what that problem was. 2. All dates in the JSON content for the push must be in the same format. Second, since 1970, which is not the default encoding strategy for a JSON encoder. It's actually second since the reference time, 1990. So be wary of that, which can lead to sending failures, as in JSON, both formats are represented by numeric values. Then you might encounter that when you send a numeric value in reference time, the activity won't start, even if the push was received correctly. Because of that date, is in the past. So be careful with this title. It took me quite a while to catch this issue. 3. The value of timestamp needs to be relatively close to the time the push is sent. Otherwise, the live activity won't update even if the push is received successfully. And iOS won't warn you about it, which could happen if the timestamp of your update was yesterday, for example. This update will be silently discarded in that case. About signing and errors, there is not much we can do about in terms of debugging. But for all the rest, Apple suggests to use the console app and observe the processes LabActivitySD, APSD, and ChronoD, and your iOS target too. We went through the process of design, coding, and usage of the LabActivity, both in code and via push notifications. In the description down below, you will find my full working example and relevant documentation to dig deeper into this topic. Let me know if you have any questions and don't forget to like and subscribe. If you develop iOS apps, you should check out my video about snapshot testing and Xcode Cloud next. I hope you liked the video and until the next one.